Hi friends! Today I present my January faves. I was much better in keeping track of my faves for this past month because it always happens at the end of the month I ask myself, what did I use? What did I buy? Oh shoot! And we have a nice mixture of lifestyle, electronics, makeup of course. So why don't we go right into it starting with the electronic category of the faves. Because I'm not super techie but I do get into some new Mac laptops. I have purchased mine last summer, I believe, of 2021. And upon learning that uh, Apple was coming out with the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip technology, an SD card slot, a 1080p FaceTime camera, well, I just had to have it. And I know I just bought my laptop and I looked into the trading program that Apple has. And my laptop was actually in good condition and I was able to trade it in for a value of 1500. Although I would recommend if you are ever like myself and get wooed by new laptops as they do come out every one or two years to not put stickers on the laptop. I spent quite a time with some Goo Gone <laughs> gloves and washcloths to carefully take off all the shtickas off my laptop. So I learned my lesson and I bought a clear case for the one currently now that I want to show you. My ultimate favorite for the month is my 16 inch brand new MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. I have to say one of the standout benefits to owning this laptop is the fact that the battery life is killer. I don't worry about it anymore. I still carry around my charger, but I'm not monitoring the battery life as much as I used to with my older laptop. And my favorite benefit, especially now with the uh, M1 chip technology, how it's just more efficient is that the laptop does not get hot. There is no fans running okay. I mean, there was a point where I thought my laptop was just gonna take off from its stand. <laughs> and when I could edit on my lap, which is not preferable but when I find myself on the couch sometimes and editing my thighs don't feel like they're going to sizzle so I would say if you are in the market for grabbing a new Apple laptop I think those are the standout benefits the longer battery life the fact that the fans don't go zooming hot and just and I do think it's faster I bought the laptop with the 16 gig graphics card. I used to have the 32 and I was contemplating getting 32 again, but heard from the Apple laptop review channels that because of the M1 chip technology, 16 gigs is actually pretty good. So I stuck with that. Otherwise I would have had to spend an extra $400 on the 32 gig uh, spec up. But I love the 16 inch because I watch Demon Slayer on it and Attack on Titan all my anime shows. But I also like to edit on a bigger screen. There is the 14 inch that people prefer because this new construction is heavier than the previous. So that is something I would consider if you're not like me and you don't primarily work at home. It's rare that I travel or work on my laptop on route. If I do take it anywhere, it's to Bay's house or to Maddie's house, but once I'm there, it's on the table. And there are some occasions, like, you know, if I'm trying to get a Pat McGrath video up on the same day where I edit on the train, and maybe during those circumstances, I do notice the weight of the laptop since I am carrying it in my backpack, so on and so forth. I do like the 16 inch, I just prefer it, especially because, again, I mostly find myself editing at home, but the fact that I can edit here on my desk and then just take it over to the living room when I teach my virtual classes. The versatility and mobility of a laptop versus me buying a desktop checks off all the boxes for me in terms of what is best for my workflow lifestyle. Next on the list we have planners. I am a multi-planner type of a person. It might be overdoing it, I understand, and if you have a bigger planner you can definitely consider consolidate all the things, finances, YouTube, whatever, life, all in one planner. But I like to have different planners that capture the different facets of my life. So this one I had shown 
a few months back. This is my Hobonichi Techo Planner, a Japanese brand planner, which I just adore. I was first introduced to it last year and I went crazy buying all the planners. I actually am repurposing one I bought last year to keep track of all the brushes. Fude Beauty is nice to send me just to keep track of the pricing and the bristle type and what have you. This that released for 2022 is the Yuki Fujisawa collaboration. The designer collaborated with Hobonichi Techo and again I had shown this few months back the lace overlay with this shiny metallic finishing and this is my movement planner where I keep track of my training in terms of the sets and the reps and how much load I use to maintain my progressive overload and just keep track of what I lifted last week if I use 25s well then I could use 27.5 this week and helpful for me in terms of training so I can get a good handle on my progress and I also jot down my movement classes so different sequences that I come up with whether it's for Theraflow or for my barefoot body conditioning because I can wing it sometimes I just don't like to do it all the time because when I dedicate time to dissecting my patterns and my sequences. You know, I could I can make up some good stuff. I make sure I jot those down and also to have it on record if I wanted to rotate a class here and there. If it's just one of those days where my brains are shot, I'm like, well, I could go back to this class and teach it again because it's been a couple of weeks. So that's what I like to use it for. Also keeping track of my favorites for the month because before you start the month, you have like a note section where you could, you know, whatever your goals are for the month or what have you, I then dedicate this page to jotting down what the favorites are gonna be as the month goes along. You have the time here on the side if you wanted to use it as like a traditional to-do list planner, but again, this is where I have my training, you know, my cold shower therapy log where I'm like, well, I was in the cold shower for, I can't believe it. I was working on this, I think, this is now my second month. I started 30 seconds and now I'm at two minutes and 15 seconds. This journal is my finance journal. So this is a Midori. The one we just saw was Hobonichi. Midori is another popular Japanese planner brand. This is more low key in terms of the layout. So you still have the graph paper on one side and on the other you have the days and the numbers. And of course you have the month blocks here. So this is where I like to keep track of my finances, of what I purchase for food, for makeup, expenses for my brand because Oh, always at the end of the year when I have to gather all the expenses and what I purchase for YouTube and what have you for my for my class brand, it's easier when everything is just on, it's just jot it down. And I know I could use Excel. I know I could make an electronic grid, but there's something about me writing it down and referring to those notes that makes me feel more secure, okay? And what i rather do, right? I can make notes also next to these numbers, like maybe you should just buy two cappuccinos this week instead of seven. Because once you add it up and see it in front of you, you can truly evaluate and make better decisions, have better strategies in place if saving money is a goal. That is my goal definitely for this year, to be more mindful with my spending. And if there is something on my wish list, well, I'll put it down in the finance planner and prepare for it. Like the Sugu blushes I bought. And of course, my personal planner that was created and gifted to me by one of our fam members. This is what I dedicate just for myself. Notes or where on my birthday, my friend Samantha took me to the Dior exhibit. So I have a Canon, I think it's called the selfie printer, where you could hook it up with your phone and then print out the actual photo from your phone library. And it's nice that I could actually dedicate this planner for myself. It doesn't have to be like an essay entry for me every day. There are weeks, you know, one goes by, I haven't written anything. So I take on a retrospective mindset 
when I go back on my week, remember the standout occurrences, jot them down, and look, I got a Ninoske bookmark, okay? And that's the purpose my kinky sweat journal serves. And you know, it might be a little complicated. I might bring all three to Bay's house. It's excessive, but that's just how I roll. I like to have my different planners for the, again, the different uh, elements of my life. If I had a bigger one, sure, I could consolidate them, but I like this system so far. A lifestyle purchase from Nordstrom, that was a fluke. I stumbled upon it as I was just going through, you know, new arrivals in the beauty section on the uh, mobile app, and I encountered this Ise Miyake pouch. I had always wanted a bao bao, whether pouch, backpack, or tote. If you don't know, Ise Miyake is a Japanese fashion designer, formerly known as Miyake Kazumaru, but in Japanese, it would be Miyake Ise, but the brand, the fashion brand is Ise Miyake. And Bao Bao is like the more affordable branch for his luxury brand for the younger crowd. And I think just highly distinguishable by this just geographic light. It's just so satisfying to look at. And I'll include an article that I feel outlines my sentiments for uh, Ise Miyake perfectly. This is from Dobrina Jakova, published on June 26, 2020. With the Bao Bao bag in a way, it could have only been designed by Ise Miyake, says Valerie Steele, the director of the museum at the Fashion Institute of Technology. It totally has his kind of sensibility, the way he uses materials, the way he thinks in terms of modernity and functionality with an edge of the fact that traditional Japanese aesthetics do seem so modern and timeless and global now. Eventually, I will love an Ise Miyake backpack and I'm not into luxury designer. I used to because it was like a self-validation thing that was really stupid, but I grew out of that. But there's some luxe designers that I adore where you know this is from Ise Miyake. Just by looking at it, it stands out in terms of the design, the vibe and all that to say this was sold on Nordstrom on sale and it was the last one and I just amazing that I was able to grab this it being the last one I was actually expecting as checking out to receive the message that oops sold out you were too slow but I managed to purchase it so this is my utility bag that I carry around in my bigger backpack because I'm a bag and a bag and a bag type of person, okay? I love the color. It's mesh with the resin pieces on there. It's super flexible. It's just, it feels good. But again, the design and this mint color, can't get enough. Speaking of bags, I mentioned Dagne Dover before. I think I had presented one of their backpacks maybe sometime last year or a year and a half ago. These are the Mila Toiletry Organizer. And when I first saw this, I was like, that is so clever. It comes in two sizes, large and small. And what I adore about this design is the fact that yes, it's zippered, but you have this removable grid that has Velcro here on the side. You could use the grid or you could just take it out and use the compartment as a whole as you like. It also has these elastic loops here for maybe smaller items like, you know, your lash serum. It has a zippered pouch here on the inside of the top. And I just, I just love the fact that you can travel around with your toiletries upright. I primarily use the large one here. You can see this is where I have all my moisturizers, my floss. This is where I put my contacts or if you have other medications that you got to put, but it doesn't need that much space. You just need a little pouch space for that. I absolutely adore this thing. Now, unfortunately, this color, the rosewood is seasonal and sold out. I purchased these in store. I was walking around Soho, saw the Dagny store. And when I asked the associate if they had these two in rosewood, because I remember that these were sold out online and they happened to be in stock because that week they got a shipment in. I was I was there at the right time. The two colors they have right now are Onyx and Moonbeam. The last time I checked, both colors were sold out or I think Moonbeam was maybe sold out. Onyx is still in stock, but they do have the restock alert prompt that you could enter your email 
and get sent a message that those shades are in stock but I would keep checking because usually they have seasonal colors come out every couple of months I know the rosewood is no longer available but the onyx and the moonbeam is nice I had mentioned sear Trudon candles in my last video one of you had said when visiting the website and you checked the price you were like excuse me <laughs> these are very expensive these are lux candles i am completely and utterly in love and i had again shown the holiday candles in my december faves this is usually how they come in like this forest green glass with the sear to dawn label here on the front i wanted to showcase madeline which is one of their signature scents and oh my gosh, tell me how you can accomplish a fragrance that smells like flowers and leather. Please explain. It's soft, but woody at the same time. It just, it just delivers the perfect space smell for me. It's not overwhelming. It's very comforting, especially now in the winter time. And I think even appropriate as we move into spring because of the floral presence in the scent. But the leathery woodsy base is just a perfect foundation. And I definitely recommend Madeline if because there are a lot of scents. There's also the Moroccan mint that is just so fresh. That's the next one on my list. When it gets warmer, Moroccan men is on the us on the list. I do keep them in the box because I just adore the boxes. And also you can repurpose these if you wanted. Like I could definitely use these for brush holders without a doubt. And I know they're very expensive, but one of those things I think when experiencing a luxury scent like what Sir Trudon curates and offers, it's one that although it's overwhelming in a good way in a, it's a sensory experience that just cannot be replicated with cheaper candles. Yankee Candle cannot get anywhere close to what this delivers. And that's not to say that, listen, I'm not saying you can't buy the cheaper candles because if you want your space to smell good and you have a budget, I totally get it. But for someone like myself that's very sensitive to fragrance, I definitely cannot wear perfume, although I tried. Sir Trudon has perfumes as well. It's just really tough for me to have on my body. Although I was told maybe I could spray it behind my knees and it not be as intense, I'm gonna try that. I mentioned this before with cooking and everything and just giving the room a little bit of freshness, okay, to get the that food smell out. I do rely on candles and I love that the scent is so multi-layered and dimensional in a way that transports you and goes beyond what a candle is for me. I mean, this, I don't know what else to say. It is absolutely and utterly exquisite. Madeline, get into it. I showed a Kyben Zero purchase in my Natasha Denona Safari tutorial video. I know, so random, but I wanted to mention it for sure in my January faves. I'm on the website now. Kyben Zero is an Asian-owned apparel brand that pushes anime as an art medium. We believe that manga and anime is just as if not more powerful than reading as a way to immerse ourselves in world building. Kyben is the name of the Maple Story Guild I was in back in the day. It basically means a beggar in Vietnamese and was just a fun name that I love to use throughout my life. Zero is a concept I've always loved because it represents the starting point as well as the end. If you want to read more about the brand philosophy, I will link the website link down below. But I just purchased, well, I, I actually just purchased uh, Tokyo Avengers uh, apparel that's on its way today. Can't wait until it arrives. But I also got the Tengen hoodie. Look at the Maki Maki mice. Can, can you even? Maki Maki. Also, we have the wives, Tengen's wives. We have Hinatsuru, Makio, and Suma. And on the other sleeve, we have the villains for the Entertainment District arc, Daki and Yutaro. We also have Tengen here. Best man Tengen on the back here in the middle of the battle. And also on the front as like a badge. So that's really cool. I also have the Inosuke sweatpants as well as the Inosuke shorts. There is another drop happening. Let me grab this now. The next drop is February 10th for Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen. Get into it. I am definitely, I don't know what other designs they're gonna drop for Gojo, but Gojo is bae. 
okay? So because they're not a super big brand, these releases are curated and very small. So make sure you grab those release dates. And I was also made an affiliate. I can't believe it. You want 15% off, you can use the code KINKYSWEAT at checkout. I'll have the affiliate link down below. I'm definitely gonna be getting some stuff, especially if it's Gojo. If they ever do Attack on Titan, and listen, I love Aaron. Aaron's a star right now because if you did not watch yesterday's episode, if you did, your mind was blown, especially if you are anime only and not a manga reader. But out of all the Attack on Titan characters, Levi is my favorite. Levi Ackerman is the man. So if there was ever a Levi anything from Kaiben Zero, I'm gonna see y'all on checkout. That's all I'm gonna say. All right, that is it for tech and lifestyle. And we have finally arrived to the makeup. I saw quite a few videos on this product and I was going to film a dedicated one, but I thought, you know what? Let me just wait till the favorites video. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I almost skipped on this, but I saw that there were great reviews and some were kind of meh about it. I've been using this every day. I think since the beginning of January, I absolutely love this product. I don't reach for anything else. I think that the light coverage and ease of use formula presented here is by far one of the most beautiful complexion products that Charlotte Tilbury has released. And it doesn't have any fragrance. That's what kept me away from looking into it further. When I went to Sephora, I looked at the ingredient deck on the box and did not pick up any uh, natural fragrance, linalool, whatever. There was nothing in here and I was thrilled to discover that because I had mentioned this before. I love Charlotte Tilbury powder products. The airbrush flawless filter pressed powder I use today. I also love the Hollywood flawless filter. Although I haven't used her contour and liquid highlighter squeezy sticks, I'm sure they're beautiful. I just, you know, I didn't want to get too crazy. But what piqued my interest for Beautiful Skin is that I was seeking out a complexion product that was more like a skincare one. Something that was low commitment in terms of coverage, but one that I can build upon itself to create the covers that I was looking for. It definitely applies like a moisturizer, which I thought fascinating when I first used this. It sinks into the skin. It leaves behind a nice glow without looking greasy. It doesn't look slick. It doesn't look overly shiny. It just looks like your skin, which I absolutely love because if you want to adjust the finish, you can use a pressed powder, a loose powder to adjust how matte it looks, how soft matte it looks, depending on what brush you use, whether it's squirrel or goat hair or synthetic could determine how the skin looks after the powder has been blended. What I also appreciate is the level of coverage you can achieve with something that's meant to be light coverage in nature. And I recognize that when I applied a little more on the areas around my jawline that does have more of the pigmentation left behind from previous blemishes that I found that just applying a little more on those portions provided me with the right amount of coverage. The staying power, I think it all depends on your environment, right? So if you are wearing a mask a lot, it's not going to stay on as if like a long wear foundation would. I think you can improve the longevity by powdering it down, but I don't mind it wearing. It just wears down naturally because again, I think it applies like a skincare product and the wear down doesn't look stark in contrast as if it was a medium to high coverage foundation, right? It just kind of wears with how your skin usually not wears but changes throughout the day and it basically flows with that evolution if you will. I have this in 8 warm and it is a great shade match for me. It's not too light and not too warm because I did swatch the two next shades after 8 warm. One looked far too yellow and the other a little too warm orange. So it would have just looked out of place, especially with my neck and chest. So if you are my skin complexion tone shade, then 8 Warm is definitely a good way to go. And this is almost, I mean, I've been using the heck out of this and I'm actually considering replacing it after it is done. I know NARS just came out with a new foundation, so maybe I'll try that after I finish this. But it's been a, a Charlotte Tilbury type of month for me in terms of the beautiful skin. Again, from the actual texture of 
the beautiful skin very creamy but lightweight in feel when you apply it on your skin the finish is natural it has a nice sheen and glow when blending it out and it works well with other products especially powder products if you decide to go in with that step the shade undertone and match is great for me i could apply this with my fingers with the brush all options are great in terms of how it blends and it's just easy is easy to pack away is easy to use so definitely a standout favorite for me for the month as i have been using it for the entirety of the month and you probably know what the next one's gonna be i just released the part two video for the suku spring collection presenting the rest of the blush shades as well as the two remaining signature color eyeshadow palettes. I have Tomoshibi and Yawasora here on the cheeks and Kazenare on the eyes. Also a combination of the sheer matte lipstick in 11 and 12. These makeup products are untouchable. The most beautiful blush formula I have ever used. I know that's saying a lot. That is a weighty statement. And I still have my favorites. I'm not saying that I will completely abandon my other blush products in the collection. But listen, the Melting Powder Blush Formula introduced by Suku this month, by far unparalleled in terms of the texture, the formula, how it blends, how it leaves behind the most beautiful skin-like glow on the cheeks, how you can apply it with a different, whatever type of brush you got, squirrel, goat hair, a mixture, synthetic. It just flows on the skin like a cushiony, drier cream, but it doesn't feel dry. It just feels like velvet on your skin. And I love the colors. I love combining them and layering them because again, they're pigmented. I would actually say they're more pigmented than their pure color blush formulas, the powder ones that the lighter shades you have to build up but the lighter shades here that come in the melting powder blush formula, for instance, Sumido, this is great. When I pick it up with a goat hair brush, it definitely leaves behind a little more robust delivering of color versus if this came in the powder formula, not as much, but I love that. The melting blush formula, I think, definitely gives a little more pigmentation there. And the fact that you have eight shades to choose from, they're all gorgeous. You got the wine, you got the, the brown, you got the beige pink, you got the more medium pink, and you got like the hot orange coral shade. It's all there, and I just adore each and every shade. I love the fact that they're not fragrance, and it's still a luxe Japanese brand. Unfortunately, Suku's skincare is heavily, heavily fragranced, and uh, the Suku team over at Selfridge is so nice when sending me my orders. They include skincare samples that on for I just cannot use I cannot use I give it to my mom I feel bad for not using it because it's really great skincare technology but it's so perfumey that's my one critique about Suku that I cannot fully embrace the brand <laughs> the skincare sector that is with the makeup totally there the eyeshadows I love this teal peacock color because although it's teal, it has a smokiness to it that I feel can be everyday friendly, especially when you pair it with the more topaz shade here. I use the shade to blend out the teal and I applied the orange on the inner corner and tapped on the overlay glittery shade here. I say glittery, but it's more like a, a twinkle overlay that you could place on the inner corner or on the center of the lid. And this is great, like to have this color, but be presented in a more, I wanna say neutral fashion, but more of a, a non-intimidating fashion. For those who wanted to venture into color, but maybe, is, for instance, if this color was presented in a melt palette, you really have to commit to that color because it'll be super vibrant and the, the shimmer will be very shiny, the metallic shiny if it was a matte, very deep, and also melt mattes tougher to blend if presented in their eyeshadow palettes, maybe not as in their stacks. But here to have the teal shade in this satin smooth finish that's so beyond easy to blend. I absolutely adore the signature color quads. I have plenty of them. And what I've been reaching for as of late, the 
again, the accessibility and just the minimalist approach that I experienced with Suku makeup encourages me to just use it more often and <laughs> exclusively, which deters me from buying more makeup. Again, when you apply makeup that's just so exquisitely formulated and aligns with your lifestyle, with your look, that elevates your makeup application, that makes you look forward to applying makeup. You don't want to use anything else. And because of that, I'm trying to bracket my purchases for February. If I want to buy something, it has to be top shelf. I don't just want to buy something. Try it, see how it goes. So whatever the next Suku drop will be, I'll be at checkout. Everything else, unless it's Pat McGrath or Natasha Denona, I didn't pick up Mini Crush because mm, I even skipped Xenon. I might pick it up eventually, but until the next midi 15 pam or standard size 15 pam releases until pat mcgrath releases anything viziar suku those are my high ranking brands right now that i am fully focused on if a rare beauty moment happens or a charlotte tilbury moment happens like with the beautiful skin or with the liquid blushes from rare beauty and the warm wishes bronzer stick there are a couple of items that will find their way into my wallet but again the priority of the brands that i just mentioned they hold high importance in terms of finance dedication. So those are my favorite for the month. Let me know what yours have been, what you've encountered that you absolutely love. I will see you down in the comments, fam. And until then, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial monthly favorites or anime get ready with me take care and i will see you again soon